we don't really have Krishna's mercy. Actually, it's Prahlad. Prahlad really has Krishna's mercy. And Narada gets all excited. He goes, Prahlad, Prahlad. And he goes, travels through space to Prahlad's planet. And he starts to praise Prahlad and, you know, go through this whole thing. Oh, you're so great. You have such great Krishna's, Krishna's mercy and all this. And Prahlad goes, oh, no, no, no. I don't have Krishna's mercy. You know, actually, Bali Maharaj. He has Krishna's mercy, you know, and then he, so Nard is like literally got bouncing all over the universe, right, going from one to the other. Oh, you're the greatest devotee, you have Krishna's mercy, you know, and then each one of them says, no, 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 no calm down. It's not me, you know, it's them. <laughs> the gopis have Krishna's mercy, you know, finally comes down to that. So, uh, see that Narda, He's not acting out of uh, his own realization or his own relationship with Krishna. He's seeing the good qualities in all these devotees, and, and they have, all of them have wonderful qualities. And so one day we may see, oh, these devotees are really cool. And then the next day we might see, oh, this other devotee is actually, you know, wow, he's really advanced and all has good qualities. And that's very nice. We should do that. We should, uh, when we study Srimad Bhagavatam, we should uh, see how we could emulate the good qualities of all these devotees who are described there. But then there's a certain point we reach where, like I say, it's, it's just like overwhelming. It's just like, oh, I've got to worship Krishna like that. This is it. Oh, yeah. You know, you'll know. You'll have certainty. But what, what I don't want is for you to reach that point and, and still keep saying, oh, but actually, maybe this is just a fair. But when you know, it's when it doesn't change. When you keep coming back to the same devotee or the same quality or the same mood of devotional service, and it keeps going like, yeah, that's, yeah, that's it. That's really it. You'll reach a point where you won't be able to ignore that feeling anymore. It'll become so overwhelming. You'll, be, you'll get so much certainty on it, and so much um, attraction for it. You won't be able to stop yourself. Be like, oh, I have to. I have to do this kind of service to Krishna. This is the only thing I can even imagine doing for the rest of eternity. Uh, that's that's the test. It's like, could I do this for the rest of eternity? You know. And uh, if the answer is yes, then it's stands a pretty good chance that that is your eternal relationship with Krishna. You know? But you'll know. I mean, I waited really. I knew what mood that my attraction to Krishna was. But I didn't try to develop any particular service in that mood until after I got Krishna Darshan. And then it developed very quickly, within a year, year and a half. You know, so... Uh, you know, it doesn't hurt to wait. It doesn't hurt to wait. But when you get Krishna, once you get Krishna Darshan, then you're, you know. Krishna already knows. Let Krishna give you Siddha Pranali. <laughs> okay? There's a question. Oh, boy, question. That's my job security. As long as there's questions, <laughs> then they know they still need me. <laughs> Ronald Singh. Can one serve Krishna with his intelligence? Just think about me. Become my devotee, just as the Gita says. It says, Is this valid way of serving him? Well, yeah. Uh, assuming that you have some intelligence. Most of us, our intelligence is contaminated. And so if we try to serve Krishna with our intelligence in the beginning, we'll make all kinds of very serious mistakes. See, this is what went wrong in ISKCON. Is that the devotees thought they were intelligent enough to come up with things on their own. You see? I remember, oh, that I never tire of telling this story. There was a television interviewer uh, talking with Prabhupada, asking Prabhupada questions. And she asked Prabhupada, 
something like, how do you manage all of these centers? You have so many devotees all over the world. Like, how do you keep it all straight? You know, how do you, something like that. Like, how do you, how do you keep it all together in your head? You know, how do you manage it? And Prabhupada said, oh, actually Krishna is managing. You know, Krishna is revealing everything. I'm simply uh, repeating what Krishna is saying. And she was like, what? You know, she couldn't accept it. She was, she was, you know, trying to, trying to wiggle out of it, you know. That, you know, that's, I mean, she didn't want to come right out and say like, well, that's unbelievable. <laughs> you know, she was trying to maintain decorum. Um, but you could see she was struggling with it, you know. And Rameshwar, one of the uh, 11 original, you know, so-called gurus, that followed Srila Prabhupada, Rameshwar was there, and he, he tried to help her out, you know. Well, uh, actually, uh, Srila Prabhupada, uh, his, you know, his intelligence is being inspired by Krishna, and so, uh, you know, he's following, and Prabhupada cuts him off, and he says, no, Krishna is directly instructing, and I am simply repeating what Krishna says. Boom. You see, they never got that point. Those disciples, those especially those eleven, uh, that that declared themselves gurus without any authorization from Prabhupada, um, never got that point. Even though this, I don't know when this film clip was. It was pretty early. It was like 1969 or something. You know, yeah, Rameshwar was already a sannyasi, so it must have been like 1969, 1970. He never got that point. He always thought that he could speculate something with his mundane intelligence, and that would be acceptable devotional service to Krishna. They all thought like that. So they came up with this plan, and they basically there was an internal coup within ISKCON, you know, like a palace intrigue, where Prabhupada, Prabhupada remained this, the, the, this, the figurehead, spiritual master, but the actual management was done by the uh, disciples using their own ideas. Uh, for example, Prabhupada created a constitution for the GBC, the uh, managing board. Well, actually, it wasn't supposed to be a managing board at all. It was supposed to be a board, uh, a group to maintain the spiritual standards. Uh, but they wanted to make it in management and they wanted to centralize the management. So Prabhupada created a whole constitution for this group called the uh, Direction of Management. And he wanted this incorporated into the bylaws of every single temple. And these rascals, what they did was they simply covered it up. They simply did not send out Srila Prabhupada's letters. They simply did not implement any of Srila Prabhupada's instructions. And he, he even sent one letter in 1972, where at the top of the letter it said in, in big, bold, underlined type, top most urgency. You must implement these uh, rules in the direction of management in the, the bylaws of each temple corporation. And none of them did it. None. Zero. To this day, the ISKCON temples have not implemented those rules. They were able to keep it a secret. Nobody even knew about this until about um, 1992 or 94, right around there. That's when this all came out. Somebody leaked it, finally. So there was like this, this whole deception going on in ISKCON based on this idea that, that we knew better than Prabhupada how to manage this because we're Westerners and we know all this stuff about business and all this stuff. And Prabhupada told him again and again and again, don't ever, ever centralize the management. So they centralized the management anyway. And guess what happened? The first time that ISKCON was sued, by Robin George. Uh, they lost millions of dollars because the management was centralized. 
All the temples, like not all, but most of the temples in North America were put at risk because they centralized the management. Huh? And then the next time, in the, the big uh, child abuse lawsuit, the same thing happened. Because the management was centralized, they were able to name all of the temples in North America as, uh, what is that called, co-plaintiffs in the suit. And um, you know, they very nearly lost the whole, the whole ISKCON. It was almost like completely wiped out by that case. All because they, nonsense rascals, they, they centralized the management. They thought it was such a great idea. Huh? Their intelligence is so smart. They weren't listening to Prabhupada. They weren't listening to Krishna. Prabhupada, he could hear Krishna. 